welcome to Voroshilov School. I'm Dr. Valentin Voroshilov, and this is Solving Problems with Dr. Voroshilov, a comprehensive guide to solving physics problems. An undergraduate physics student wants to measure the freefall acceleration. He drops a small nut from a roof of his barn, five meters from the nut to the ground when the student releases his fingers and letting the nut fall. Using his smartphone, he capturing the fall and then using frame-by-frame -frame video, finds that the nut reaches the ground 1.01 second after being released. What value does he get for G? Well, let's analyze the situation. As we know, some words are more important than others. For example, it doesn't matter that this guy is student or undergraduate. It doesn't matter if uh, he is on the roof of his barn. What important is, there is something above the ground and uh, we let it go. So the situation is simple. This object travels some distance. It takes some time to travel this distance. We can uh, assume something about its initial velocity. Well, of course, eventually it falls down with some final velocity. And uh, the questions we need to ask are simple. What do we know? What do we assume or what do we choose? What objects are involved? What do we know about those objects? What is happening to those objects? Or we can say, what phenomenon is happening? What process of processes are happening? What properties of those objects we know? What properties of those processes we know? These are the questions we should be asking again and again and again and again when we solve any problem in physics or maybe in life. So we know the object is in the free fall. How do we know that? Because it's released and it's happening close to the surface of the Earth. We know that its initial velocity is zero. How do we know? Well, we can read this word rest means the initial velocity is zero. Do we assume the initial velocity is zero? Well, no. We know the initial velocity is zero. Now, <clears throat> we also know that the height, the time, the acceleration is supposed to be related. How? Well, we could start thinking of equations because the relationship in physics, every relationship in physics is represented by a certain equation. For example, I can write distance equals velocity times time. Can we use this equation? Well, we could assume that we could and we could try to solve this problem and see if it makes sense but this assumption probably wouldn't work because for every equation there are specific situations when those equations work and then those equations don't work this equation works only and only when there is no acceleration or acceleration is zero. We know that when free fall is happening here, yeah, something like this, the object is speeding up. Speeding up means velocity changes. And if velocity changes, that means acceleration is not zero. So we cannot use this equation. That would be a wrong assumption. Now we can go back to our picture. If velocity changes, how does it change? Well, again, 
we know that when object, any object, falls down close to the surface of the Earth, it falls down with the same acceleration, which doesn't depend on the mass or shape of this object. Of course, we neglect the air friction, but neglecting air friction, the acceleration of this object has the magnitude equals to about 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, of course, in this problem, we should actually calculate this number and see if this student gets a pretty close result. But anyway, we know it should be speeding up. The acceleration should point down. And uh, if we want to ask ourselves, what is related to what? And that's the most important question we should ask before starting writing any equations. We know initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, those variables all related to each other. And of course, uh, distance traveled also is related to these variables. How? That's the next question we should ask. And the answer is always provided by a specific equation. For example, here we can write because the acceleration doesn't change, constant acceleration, the motion is happening with constant acceleration. Uh, initial velocity plus acceleration times time should give the final velocity. And uh, we know that displacement, strictly speaking displacement, not distance, is related to initial velocity and acceleration and time traveled by the object by this equation. By writing these equations, technically we have finished um, analyzing the physical model. And uh, we should be starting plugging in numbers and calculating whatever we need to calculate. But there is one more important point we should stress. Many physical quantities in physics are vectors. So for example, acceleration, velocity, displacement are vectors. And when we're writing an equation, any equation, we always should ask ourselves, in this equation, this variable, what does it represent? A magnitude or an absolute value or a component? For example, this letter A, what does it represent? Is it the magnitude of acceleration or its component? What is final velocity this variable represent? The magnitude of the final velocity or the component of the final velocity relative to some axis? So <coughs> using these equations means that we need to understand the vectorial nature of velocity acceleration and displacement as well. A, V, V, delta S, those variables represent components. And if we want to use components mathematically correctly, we need an axis. Well, usually we draw x-axis to the right and y-axis up or down and it's up to us how we choose the direction. We could choose the y-axis straight up or we could choose the y-axis straight down. Eventually we would get exactly the same result for the magnitude of the acceleration we're looking for. But the mathematics would look slightly differently. So, let's choose the axis. Well, in this situation, if you look at the picture, we can see two arrows pointing down. So, if we choose the axis down, 
these components are going to be positive and the positive is easier to deal with than negative so let's choose the y-axis straight down now we're supposed to choose the origin the zero position zero level we could choose it here on the ground or we could choose it at the initial position of the knot or whatever object it is doesn't matter so now relative to this choice this component is supposed to be positive this component will be positive well in this problem we actually don't even need to use this equation initial velocity as we know is zero and the only question is left is what can we say about displacement well if we measure the position of this object from zero down and it travels down by five meters so one two three four five here y should be equal to five and the displacement which is always final value minus initial value should be equal five minus zero which is five meters and now we don't need this equation we can plug in numbers here five equals zero times time plus acceleration times actually 1.01 squared divided by 2 this is of course a zero doesn't matter if it's 1.01 or 1 billion so the equation we need to solve is this well whether we like it or not but in physics when we solve a problem we're gonna do some math in this situation it's a very simple math this is our equation so to solve this for our unknown which is a we just have to multiply everything by two at first and then divide by 1.01 .01 squared and that finally give us 9.8 are we done well not yet in physics most physical quantities have units so we have to write the unit here if we using metric system meters and seconds acceleration automatically has a unit meter per second squared and again we said that in our original equation a represents the y component relative to the positive y direction pointing down but in this situation the y component equals the magnitude of this vector so the magnitude of this acceleration is also equal to 9.8 meters per second squared we can ask what would happen if we have chosen the direction differently a good question the ground the knot let's choose the direction the positive y direction straight up so our acceleration points down the equation we are using is this the displacement equals the initial velocity times time plus acceleration times time squared divided by 2 we need to remember that when we're writing this variable a it represents the component of the actual vector well initial velocity is zero that gives zero so again the question is how do we calculate the displacement well first we have to choose the zero the origin let's do it here that's the initial position final position is here now it is five meters below zero so if we go above zero we read 
positive readings, one, two, three, four, five. But if we go below zero, we should read negative readings. So negative one, negative two, negative three, and eventually negative five. And the displacement, as we said, always equals to this difference, final value minus initial value. So negative five minus zero, negative five meters. And now our, our equation looks slightly differently. If we solve this equation, the answer is now negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What does it mean? Well, again, as we said, this variable represents the component of this vector relative to this axis. If the result is negative, that means this vector has a component opposite to the direction of the y-axis. So if the y-axis points up, that means this acceleration actually points down as it should be. And the magnitude of this acceleration, that's what we call g, still equals 9.8 meters per second squared.